Hey, it's Danish. Today we're going to be checking out the Donex ransomware, a ransomware variant that claims to use Logbit 3.0, but in reality it doesn't. Let's first start off by checking out the imports and summary report on malco.io. The file entropy can be used to check if the file sample is packed. The file entropy can also be higher if there are payloads inside the binary. Malcor was able to detect suspicious assembly code, which means there's some level of obfuscation. Anti-debugging imports were detected, such as get account, which is used for timing checks and is debugger present can check for the presence of debuggers. Here we can see imported functions such as open process token, which is usually used for getting debug privileges in malware. The compiler generated artifacts also look similar. Malcore also detected a code cave in the binary and we can use the visual address to further analyze it in a disassembler. These are dynamic imports, which means they were loaded at runtime. This can be used to prevent static analysis and Malcore was able to identify these functions. However, these API calls are common and you will find them in almost any binary. Later, we can check the dynamic output tab in Malcore to find suspicious API calls. In the string summary, we can see the RSA encryption, which means the malware might be using the RSA algorithm to encrypt the files on the machine. However, most malware will also use ChaCha20 along with RSA encryption to make file recovery extremely hard. One of the other interesting strings includes is the command string, where the ping is called. Then a batch file is deleted. This command will clean up the batch file on the disk to remove its trace. At the bottom, there is the EXIF data, which contains general information about the malware file. It includes the compilation timestamp, the file description, the hex dump of the file header, etc. You can also see the hashes for the file. Normally, you have to open PEBear to see these hashes, but Malcor will show them all. The assembly tab. The assembly tab will disassemble the binary back to assembly. This assembly code doesn't make sense because we have an exe file instead of a shell code. So it has disassembled the p header. This is useful when you upload binary files and you want to confirm if it's a shell code. The next tab is the hex dump. As the name suggests, you will see the ASCII representation of hex bytes and we can see the p header. If you go to the exports, it says no data found. That is perfectly normal because we have an exe file, so it doesn't have any exports. However, if you upload a delay malware, then you should see the exported functions here. In the import section, you should see the import hashes and the imported functions. We saw some of these functions in the summary, and now we can see all of the imports and try to understand the capabilities of the malware. The API calls such as net enum resource, net add connection shows us that the malware is accessing network resources such as the printers, the shared folders, drives. The ransomware moves laterally across the network using these shared resources. In the imports of ADV API 32.dll, we can see that the malware is using open service, query service and control service. Now these API calls tell us that the malware can stop services such as the ones related to security. For instance, it can stop the antivirus service, stop the SQL service, or it can even stop services related to the backup and recovery. If a malware can stop the backup services and then it encrypts the disk, it would be very, very hard to restore the files. And we can also see functions such as open event log, clear event log. This shows us the malware can also clear event log. It can remove the traces of the attacker's activity by clearing the event log. The functions such as script gen random, script release context, script acquire context, these are used for the encryption keys, which the malware will use to encrypt the files. In the imports of kernel32.dll, we can see find next file and find first file. This tells us that the malware is going through all the folders and files on the disk. It's a common ransomware behavior to encrypt files on the machine. We can observe several functions like unmap view of file, create file mapping, and create file. These functions are often used in process hollowing. For those unfamiliar with the concept, you can find an article for this on guidehacking.com that explains what process hollowing is and how to detect it. In short, process hollowing involves creating a legitimate Windows process and then mapping malicious code to it. This technique is used to evade detection. Additionally, we notice functions related to terminating processes such as terminate process and open process. This indicates the malware has the ability to kill a running process. 
For example, if there is a backup software installed on the machine, the malware could terminate that process. The reason behind this is to make recovery much more difficult, preventing the user from restoring their system from a backup. The imports for restartmanager.dll suggest that the malware checks if a file is being used by a process. If a file is in use, it cannot be read or written to because it is locked. As a result, the malware won't be able to encrypt that file. To bypass this, it registers the file as a resource with the restart manager and identifies which process is using it before it attempts to encrypt the file. This behavior clearly indicates the presence of a ransomware. Melcore makes it easy for you to generate YARA rules from a binary. Here we can see the hex strings from the binary. This can be used to detect the malware sample. If you have a lot of samples and you want to write YARA rules for them, Melcore will do the work for you. And you can just copy paste this to detect the sample. My favorite feature of Melcore is its dynamic output. When Melcore executes malware code, it locks the arguments of each function, allowing us to observe suspicious functions along with their arguments and written values. For instance, we can see get proc address function displayed here. If we scroll down, for example, here we can see create file is called. So the first argument for create file is the file name. The create file function is called with the first argument being servicehost.exe. This action is related to process hollowing, where the goal is to map the malware code we identified in the imports. The presence of file mapping function indicates that it intends to map the malware payload to the service host process. Let's take a look at the create mutex function. Ransomware usually use create mutex function to check if an instance of the malware is already running or not. This is to ensure that only one instance is running at a time. We're only scratching the surface here. There are more things that we can learn from dynamic output if we spend more time on this, but this should give you a clear idea of what we can do with dynamic output. If you want to extract the strings from the malware, we can use the dynamic analysis scan. In this section, we can observe several strings. Notably, we can see various file extensions such as 386 and ADV, which likely originate from the configuration file. There are options listed including kill process, kill services, shutdown system, and delete event logs, which were probably specified in the configuration file by the attacker. This file outlines the malware's intended actions, including which processes to terminate and which services to disable. Typically, a ransomware is designed to terminate any service related to security and backup to prevent disruption during the encryption of files. There is an option to shut down the system and delete event logs, which would help in removing the traces of the attacker's activity. We also notice a whitelist folder string, which suggests that the attacker intended to exempt certain folders from the encryption. Usually, folders like System32 are not encrypted to avoid breaking windows. We can see commands such as wmic, shadow copy delete, vs admin, delete shadows. These are deleting the shadow copies on the machine. This will make it very hard to restore windows after the encryption because they are deleting the shadow copies. If we go to the right, we can see the name of the processes. We can identify several process names including SQL, Oracle, Chrome, and VM. Notably, VM is one of the most popular backup software solutions used by businesses to backup their files on NAS. Next, let's examine the ransomware note. We can see several strings of English text, including complete sentences such as, you need to contact us to decrypt one file in order for the attacker to get the ransom. So Malcor successfully extracted the ransomware note for us. We see a warning in the ransomware note, which includes the name of the ransomware family, which is Donex. Lastly, there is an onion link directing victims to their website. The attackers want the victims to visit this link and contact them using the Tor browser to pay the ransom. In this tutorial, we learn what API and techniques are used by the ransomware using static and dynamic analysis on Malcor. You can also do the same for free by creating an account on Malcor. If you have lots of samples, then you can pay as low as $5 a month. Even if you use free tier, you can still access all pro features on Malcor, which is awesome. You can try out the deep static scan analysis on Malcor and see the results.